Here I create a, a torque in a red color, the same same way as the uh, the the sprocket on the left. So it creates a, a torque measurement. I'm going to say maybe this is uh, 20 newton per millimeters. Um, then uh, we one application we can do is to calculate uh, how much. Uh, torque we will get as a result on the output uh, uh, sprocket. You know, my goal is to calculate the torque uh, that I will get on this uh, on this uh, sprocket here. So um, normally, um, in the contact between the between the um, between the chain elements and the sprockets we should not have uh, friction. It should be a rolling motion without friction. Uh, yes, but uh, in the contact between the tensioner arm and the, and the, <coughs> sorry, and the chain, there should be some friction. So we have to take into account that friction. So one thing we may do on the tensioner is to uh, go here and uh, first define uh, the force that is uh, applied by the tensioner. So we say uh, we define uh, geometry like this. I'm going to say I have a segment going from here to here. Then I'm going to have a segment going from here to here. And uh, first we know that uh, on the tensioner normally there is a, there is a spring. So there should be a force that is uh, applied like this. Just going to orientate it uh, angularly like this. So I'm saying maybe uh, this force is equal to, let's say, uh, 90 uh, newtons. So this force will be given by the spring that is pushing on the on on the the tensioner when it's uh, tensioned. So on each of the contact points, we are going to have a force, a uh, normal force, and a friction force. So it means uh, we are going to have uh, many times uh, normal force and friction force like this. So I'm going to have uh, one here, one here. Uh, OK, then uh, one in this location friction as well, uh, one here with uh, friction, uh, okay, one here as well, right, one here as well, and uh, one uh, well, there is no contact here, so I don't put uh, one uh, one there. What I'm going to say is that um, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven forces. Um, so I'm going to say that all those forces should be um, uh, having the same value. So we should have, uh, if this is uh, F1, uh, if this is F2, uh, if this is F3, if this is F4, this is F5, uh, F6, F7. Okay, so um, uh, we should have some equations. So I will unlock all of them. F3, F4, F5. Here, this is, uh, let's say, F0. Uh, it's uh, the tensioner force. And I have seven forces. So I will say, in an equation, I will say F1 should be equal to F0 uh, divided by 7. Okay, So it calculates the value of uh, F1. And then I will enter the same equation for uh, F2. So I just copy the equation. I say copy. And then I enter an equation here saying uh, F2 is equal to F0 divided by 7. Same for F3. Uh, same for F4. 
sorry. So we just have to copy the equation. Um, so same for f5, uh, same for f6, same for f7. Okay, so now they are all appearing uh, deduced here in the in the modeling. So now we will need to actually um, just position those forces on the tensioner. I'm going to say that uh, this point should be on the tensioner, and then this should be uh, the center of the um, element should be on the force. And then I will say uh, we should have a perpendicularity between this and this. Okay, so we'll do the same for all the the seven other forces. Point on object. Then I say the center point of the wheel should be on the force, and the force should be perpendicular to the uh, radius. Then this point should be on uh, this radius. Uh, the center point should be on the force and then the force should be perpendicular to the uh, radius so then we say uh, this force should be on the tensioner again okay, then it's perpendicular here then we can say this force will be on the tensioner this point will be on the force and the force should be perpendicular to the tensioner. Okay, I have two left. Okay, so then we say this point should be on the force. This force should be perpendicular to the tensioner. Okay, and then the last one. So the force here. So yeah, now he has, we have all the, um, all the forces. Uh, so what we can do when we have calculated all those forces is actually to make the sum of all the frictions that are applied. Because this sum will uh, represent uh, the additional force that will be applied on, on this part of the chain. Uh, and that will, will be due to all the, to all the frictions. So we can just say, for example, we are going to have uh, an additional force uh, going this way, here on the, on the chain element, that will be parallel to the direction of the chain in this area. And uh, if uh, in the list, if we name the friction forces, if we say this friction forces is uh, friction force 1, FF1, this friction force is FF2, this one is FF3, this one is FF4, uh, this one is FF5, FF6, FF7. Okay, so then uh, I select this force, I say this is uh, FF0, let's say. So I can say in an equation, I unlock FF0 and I say FF0 uh, is equal to FF1 uh, plus FF2 uh, plus FF3 plus FF4, uh, etc. etc. Right, so it gives us the force value, and now uh, to calculate the the torque um, that we have at the output of the system, I think we will need to just define uh, uh, a, f a force that will represent the torque on the uh, left sprocket. So we just need to say we create a force in red like this. We say this force is uh, applied, let's say, in this uh, direction. So parallel to the direction of the upper link, uh, we are going to say we unlock this force. And then we say the sum of moments of uh, this moment and this force should be zero at the center point. Uh, 
so then we can use uh, we know we see that this force is opposed to the to the torque we want to calculate so now i'm just going to unlock the torque we want to calculate on the on the right and i'm saying sum of moments of uh, this torque this force and this uh, friction force uh, should be zero at the center of rotation uh, the efficiency of the system is very very bad at the moment when we have a, a torque in newton of 20 newton on one side we need to apply uh, 1400 newton on the other side if i reduce the tensioner force if i put a tensioner force of 10 for example you see if the tensioner force is only 10 uh, now when we have 20 newtons per millimeters on the left we have to apply 179 newton on the right so quite a lot of friction in the tensioner which is not 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 so good uh, the friction coefficient in each contact is uh, 0 0.2 so usually in the chain system, the friction coefficients are much less than that. But uh, when we have done this calculation, we can uh, go on the torque on the right and say analyze tolerance. So this allows to generate in, uh, in Excel a tolerance analysis on this torque value. So the torque in this situation will be minimum 171.35 newtons per millimeters and maximum 187.66 uh, newton per millimeters. Uh, 